Welcome to the introduction to the Life Purpose course, part of the online coaching and healing certification program coming up here in October, beginning of October. Hi, I'm Philip Mountrose with my wonderful wife and partner, Jane Mountrose. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Hey, this webinar, uh, this 60, 70 minute webinar is for you if you want to go deeper into your purpose, that means discovering it and living it. Um, and using coaching and healing as part of it, which can be a tremendous uh, uh, influence and in, in maybe part of your purpose as well, as we'll go explain. And we're offering this 12 week program coming up and we wanna go over what's in it. And, and, in, and when we, just, we give you snapshots of every week of the 12 weeks, we're gonna uh, explain how, what these pieces mean, give you an introduction to tasting and stick around for the ending because we're going to be doing a wonderful holistic uh, healing with uh, EFT, one of the healing modalities we teach and related to purpose and stress. And um, for Jane and myself, we came to this uh, by wanting more years ago, wanting to discover ourselves more. And I was an educator, Jane was an architect, and we got burnt out in different ways. And that led us into healing and coaching, and that took us into our purpose, what we really wanted to do, to use our passions to make a difference in the world. Uh, Jane, you wanted to, you want to amplify any of that or add on to that, just a touch of our story? Yeah, <laughs> we could tell our story for yeah. quite a while. Um, it was just the most amazing thing that has ever happened to us. I think uh, when I was an architect, I started, I had this feeling like my soul was dying. I didn't know what that meant. Um, it wasn't based on anything, just this feeling that mm -hmm. the life was being drained from me. And we'll be mm -hmm. talking about that here, actually, about how that works. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know at all where I was going. I just knew that I couldn't stay where I was and I needed some healing. So we started taking different classes in spiritual healing and Reiki and hypnotherapy and just many, many over a period of a couple of years. And I just loved it. I never thought I would be any good at it because I was this left-brained architect. <laughs> right. And then I started noticing with Reiki, oh, I actually can feel energy and doing healing. Actually, you know, something's happening here. And it just became more and more exciting. One thing led to another because Philip was an educator. We ended up starting to teach what we were learning. And, and like I said, it just has evolved over the years. It's just, it's been the most amazing journey. I couldn't imagine when we started on, on this, which was a, a th three decades ago, <laughs> actually, yes. when, we, when we started doing this part of it. Um, I couldn't have imagined it would be as wonderful as it is. So all this led in, in the coaching and healing and life purpose, which we teach, as I mentioned, and I'm going to share some, some key nuggets and stick around for the end when we do a demonstration and how to go further because some people may want to get deeper uh, in-depth training uh, in a small group setting and get the support. Most people are lacking support in this journey. That's often the missing piece and they wonder why it's not coming together because you don't have the ongoing support. Anyway, so uh, just to give you a taste of like what is sort of behind this life purpose uh, training that we're, we're offering and what we're going to share an intro overview. Uh, Jen Peters, who took the program a few years ago, she's actually from New Zealand. It's nice people from all over the world take it. Uh, she said, um, and this sort of encapsulates what a lot of people are experiencing and when they come to this program, who didn't know it existed probably. She said, I spent two years searching for these courses. I knew I was looking for something, but I wasn't sure what until I came across them. It's helped me enormously and in unexpected ways. It provided structure to an area that is traditionally quite ethereal and difficult to put into meaningful processes. I don't know of any other courses even remotely like these with the scope they have. The program has literally ignited the light within. It's for anyone who is seeking a deeper understanding of who we are and what we're here to do. These courses are the bridge, bridge into the bigger picture for those who have an awareness that there's more to life than meets the eye. And she's now, uh, uh, she was in the corporate world at the time she wanted to go into coaching and healing in her case. Many people who take the program do, but some people have other, other reasons to take it. Um, so who is this training for? 
Well, why uh, we've been offering it for about 25 years. This is a very tested, developed program. <laughs> we've been doing it on Zoom now for quite a few years. It's not just something we've just sort of tossed together and see if it works. We know it works. There's huge transformation. It is a kind of a spiritual transformation training and school in itself. Who takes it? Healthcare workers, traditional alternative people, business people, their real estate people, lawyers, educators, teachers, people are already coaches and healers who are kind of starting off, or some people have been in the field for decades, artists, authors, speakers, self-taught learners, and holistic-minded people take it. Uh, why, why would you take it? Why, why do people take this? And, and uh, well, the bottom line is personal and spiritual growth. You're being kind of called to this training, and it's going to take, it's like feels like coming home when you sort of discover what we're exploring, if you really relate well to it. And then we know not everyone does, but if you do, you'll know what I'm talking about. And you might be in between and kind of evaluating it and may want to go through some, some reflection time on what we're going to share here in the next 60 minutes. And you may want to start a practice, enhance a practice, or maybe somehow integrate this into your career. And you're not sure, but you know this is your next step. So this is something we came up with, the transformational triad. This is a very interesting graphic, and, and let's explain this briefly, Jane. Yeah, yeah. as I mentioned, we've been in the field now for a few decades, doing, teaching these trainings for more than 25 years now. And so we're at a point where, with all of the pieces that we've had, they, at a certain point, they started coming together and forming a larger picture. So what we're teaching is not just a series of techniques, it's the little things, actually how to deal with life on a day-to-day -day basis. And also it goes into uh, the larger picture, uh, the big questions that we have in our lives, as, as you saw in Jen Peters' um, quote, which I thought was very beautiful. Um, so there are three courses and this one, the, the Life Purpose course that's coming up is a 12 week course, it's one of three and it's a full year for all of them. And they each one focuses on one of these pieces of what we call the transformational triad, although they do all work together. So you can't, and, that, and that's a really important point, you can't have just one without the other ones because they all, they all converge and assimilate together. So you, if you start there with self-development, you know, you wonder, well, who am I? <laughs> and that answers that question, who am I? Uh, then you go into dream development, where am I going? And purpose development, why am I here? That bigger picture of why we're here. And so if you put all of these courses together, you actually receive the big and small answers to all of those questions we have. Um, really in-depth training in, in each area. And I think that it really key to understand in each area, I'm going to just give you an overview. Uh, the self-development area is the growth element. So we all possess greatness that longs to emerge and we, are, we want to grow and evolve. So as we overcome stuck obstacles that keep us stuck, our hearts open, and this is a big part of it is, is the truth in our hearts, revealing more of the truth of who we are and revealing universal wisdom. This wisdom transforms lives. And for, I think for us at the time when I felt my soul was dying and Philip was just burned out, um, another thing that we were really seeking was having a way to find our own truth, an easy way, <laughs> not, we had, we had taken a lot of classes and gotten little pieces and suggestions and hints and it all still seemed kind of like it was behind a veil and it wasn't that easy. When actually it is, it's very easy. <laughs> and we'll talk a little bit about that today. So that's the self-development. Then it goes to dream development. Um, we teach manifestation. One of the courses is on manifestation. And this taps into the calling of that opening heart. And it is that calling, following that calling that makes us feel alive. So for me, you know, I was feeling like I was dying. I was going in the wrong direction. And as, as we started actually approaching these things that we're doing now, everything changed for me. 
So the questions you might ask is what makes your heart sing? You know, what, mm -hmm. what makes you feel like you want to get up early every day because it's so exciting? These are important things. And, and it really is that calling of the heart that inspires us to do something special with our lives and understand actually that we are special. I think that that was another part for me. I didn't think I mattered. You know, I didn't think anything I did made a difference. I thought, why would anyone care what I have to say anyhow? I didn't value myself. So that's a, that's a big part of it too, as we're developing our dream is realizing I'm here for a reason. And, and it's, not, it's not by accident even that all of us are here now. It doesn't mean anything <laughs> specific, but everything happen, that happens has meaning to us. Uh, so that, <clears throat> that leads then to purpose development and making a difference. And it really brings everything together then at a higher level. I think that desire for a purpose evolves as we start to open to our dreams and realize, well, I also want to do something that produces a positive impact on the world. You know, we're all of us, like I suggested, we're here for a reason. We have a life we're born to live. And it's, it's really sad the way things are in society now because I think people really want to make a positive difference, but few have yet to recognize their deeper purpose and have an understanding of how they can realize it. So when you put everything together and we'll be going also into details of, of what we teach, um, you get this big overview of, of the journey. Right. Um, yeah. So just a, one other little point, actually a big point, if you've heard of that idea of the, of the trifold flame in the heart, you know, it's, which is common, commonly understood in different religions. I know Catholicism for one. Um, the, the trifold flame has three different aspects to it. And the three lines of development create a synergy in those elements, which are love, creative power, and divine wisdom. And this fuels what is actually a personal and spiritual transformation. So um, it's, it's interesting. Our program is not just a course. It is an opportunity, really an evolutionary opportunity mm -hmm. for those who are so inclined. So that's a, the kind of the big, <laughs> the yeah, big the, view of it the all. Bi the big, yeah, the big view. Just a note on the on that transformational triad. They're co-arising. So even though we're talking about life purpose in this webinar, which is the next course coming up at this time, uh, of going deep and, and giving you some key points to it, uh, you it's not like you have to do self development before you can have dream development before you can have purpose development. They're all coexisting and co-arising. And, and each person is unique in their journey too. Right. Well, and as you'll see, actually, as we go into the details of this course, they all come, they all are part of it. It's not like we say, well, we're going to do just this life purpose part because you have to integrate in some of the other pieces for it to even make any sense. It's not linear, it's multidimensional. Right, right, yeah. So should we go a little more into life purpose then, Jane, itself? Yeah, I think it's it's such an exciting area. And I think more and more people really are wanting to know, you know, why am I here? This, you know, these questions are, are really coming forth, especially in a time like this when there's so much uncertainty externally. You know, without a purpose, <laughs> you can say we feel lost. We could feel lost, misdirected, unfulfilled, disconnected, which is really disconnected with from what we would say is the truth in our hearts, easily distracted because we have no sense <laughs> of where we're going. Mm -hmm. and, and to that, I would add also going back to the aliveness element without the purpose, you know, it's, it's easy to become de-energized and feel lifeless. Like, you know, why even bother? Why get up in the morning? At the end of that time when I was an architect, I didn't want to get up in the morning. I couldn't think of any reason, <laughs> you know, why I would actually volunteer to. I had to, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't really want to. And then when, when we discovered this way to connect with the truth in our hearts, I couldn't wait to get up in the morning. 
it was just just that one thing within a very short time you know i'd say weeks or days you know not even a month i was so excited about my life because i was starting to discover who i really am mm -hmm. and what's really happening here and that's that part with the purpose we have intention we feel like there's a direction we feel fulfilled um, and it's connected with the heart and soul and there's focus and openness it's a whole different it's like there are two different ways of being in the world and you can almost see that division mm -hmm. like some people are in one and some people are in the other and of course along with that you feel more you feel energized you feel excited about being in, alive you get a sense that everything is in divine order and that you're going in the right direction and it just feels great and you, when you live more your own, your purpose, you add it to the collective because you are helping other people as part of your purpose. And that raises the collective energy too, as much as you can personally do in, in your own life with your own power, your own abilities. Right, right. Okay. So that takes us to these 12 weeks of training that we're doing starting the beginning of October. I want to give you a little bit of what we teach each one, which is, <laughs> there's a lot in each training, which is about an hour and a half for each training. And there's practice too. We're practicing techniques that you're learning. So in the first week, we go into what's, a, what's called a, a matrix. We have this roadmap for each of our three courses. I'll show you. And it, it, it's a, a, a seven part roadmap from uh, uh, setting your course to uh, taking action, you know, and, and connecting with your soul and goal setting. So there's all these steps that are involved and there's knowledge and tools to realize them about this matrix. So it's kind of an overview, a table of contents, an index of the program and what you're learning. And then we teach a coaching process, which is very good for people who are, if you want to have a business and you want to have clients or people come to you, how to do that, what, what you would say, what you would not say. And there's kind of a step-by-step -step process um, that's extremely valuable uh, and useful yeah. and practical. Mm -hmm. it, that, that process, it's hard to explain how transformational that can be for people. It, it's very powerful. People love it and it's a great way to get started. It's a great yeah. way to get started yourself and also to get started if you're working with someone else with a new client of uh, helping them to establish a direction. Whether it's, you know, it doesn't have to be that they're going anywhere with coaching, but just anywhere in their lives, anywhere this right. focuses on on realizing their purpose. Yeah, like what do you want to do with your life and if it's relative to a business or a client, uh, finding a client or free session, this is what you use. Or as Jane said, it could just help you get personal clarity or someone else. It's a very valuable and, and other yeah. people teach variations of it and they often actually charge a lot of money just for learning this one process because it's so valuable and so proven. We kind of have our own way of doing it in this context. And it relates to goal setting and what we call the four freedoms, uh, which is your, your calling or your purpose and your abundance and your uh, time and your environment, how freedoms relate to that. And we put that in the context also of a life purpose formula that we teach. Um, so these are just little snapshots. Obviously there's a lot behind every little bullet point, but we wanted to give you an overview. So that takes us to week two. <laughs> right, and you'll see that this, the course is just chock full of different things. Um, so this one focuses really on connecting with that inner truth and wisdom, which we all have. Um, and we have a process for that we call soul centering, which we introduced in this week. And we also provide an overview of seven spiritual stages, which is seven stages in spiritual development, which when, when we share this, it actually highlights the power of a, of a holistic approach because the whole journey is built right into us. You know, you wonder, well, how do we evolve? You know, it's like, how does this happen? It's all here. We have, and it's really in the energy system, the seven stages in, in our development relate directly to mm -hmm. the seven major energy centers or chakras in the body. And it doesn't matter if you know any of this or even care about any of that, but the stages really help to understand where where you are in the journey and how to progress and also to understand other people. 
why right. it is that people are so different. And we're, we're experiencing, obviously, dramatic <laughs> evidence right. of that, unfortunately, in our society right now, which is causing a lot of actual, you know, of um, fear and separation between people. And that isn't necessary, but, but it is a journey from fear to love, too. So... Mm -hmm. um, that it's just that's a one it's a wonderful wonderful thing to to understand and explore right. just as a note this overall of our, our the program of what you're seeing that that uh, constitutes these weeks is holistic coaching techniques uh he, holistic energy healing techniques with eft and uh spiritual kinesiology hypnotherapy nlp many of them we've developed ourselves and tested over the years too mm -hmm. so that takes us to week three speaking of using uh, uh, energy techniques we have a version of eft that we've developed and branded uh, which is holistic eft adding some points and some imagery into the process that we found makes it more holistic uh, and in some ways can be more effective and there's also the stages of life uh, you, there's sort of from birth to death, there's stages and there's a midlife sort of crisis or transition. And there's seven stages that are marked out by different systems. And there can be stopping points at any of them, you know, from traumas and so forth or things that slowed you down in your purpose. And we go over what that is and how to understand it and use it. Mm -hmm. And why I think one of the very transformational times in people's lives that which i'm sure many of the people i can see of the ones i can see <laughs> here um understand is that we go through a transition in life we're we're evolving and and becoming more mature and understanding the world more and then it gets to okay so who am I really? That's where often that, that spiritual transformation starts, although it can start very young, depending on, on the person. But there, I know that when, when I was having that transition or transformation from being an architect, um, mm -hmm. I was around 40 years old at the time. So there is that kind of time in our lives when people sometimes they get stuck there because they won't go deeper. But for those of us who do go deeper, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying it can't happen earlier either. There are it sometimes some does. young people, right? It can happen at any time. Um, but if we choose to go deeper, it's like, it's the best. <laughs> it's the best time you could have in your life. And it just is really wonderful to look at those stages in an evolutionary manner. Right. So that takes us to week four. And then we go into, we actually explore different ways to understand your essential nature. In other words, uh, you could say the personality traits or soul traits that your soul decided to bring into this life to realize your purpose. Um, there, we go into quite a few, which will, Philip will be turning to a page that kind of provides an overview in a minute here. And our students are amazed at how much there is to learn about ourselves. You know, we think we know ourselves, but if you think, well, you know, what, say, <laughs> in this, these, this is called the uh, Michael teachings, uh, that we each have a role. Like I'm, a, I'm an artistic person, and Philip is a more priestly type of a person. Some people are more warriorly. There are different, different roles. We have different goals that we want to achieve. And we do them in different ways. Like I tend to be cautious. Philip tends to be passionate. We're somewhat opposites, which actually has worked out really well for us. Um, and what's, what's a person's main attitude? You know, some people are cynical. Some are idealistic. Some are very spiritual in their attitude. I'm a pragmatist. Um, Philip is, he's a combination, maybe more of a, a cynic and, and an idealist <laughs> kind of together. He goes from one to the other. Um, so, and also what is, what is your chief defense? You know, how, what do you, what do you fall into <laughs> to defend yourself if you feel like your identity is being threatened? This is very valuable to know for oneself and also for working with others. It's just in, incredible what you can understand once you mm -hmm. get into this. Right. And um, it, it, people really love learning about it. Right. 
Yeah, so and, and uh, so that is quite a study in itself. It's sort of a course within a course. Extremely valuable to know that information, kind of like knowing whether you're a man or a woman. Yeah, you can go in lot, through life if you didn't know what a man was and a woman was. But if you if you do, you know a lot about yourself and people right off the bat. As so with this system, uh, which we found to be quite objective compared to even some of the other things out there, like the Enneagram, mm -hmm. uh, it's much more um, complex and yeah. really covers it covers things better. I think it's elegant and it yeah. it, it accounts for a lot of what seeming contradictions and in, in inconsistencies and in people make sense of a lot of things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to make sense of through even through a whole lifetime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. again, it's, you know, with that, you really, it, you learn to appreciate yourself more. You do. For the things that are stand out about you. Like for me to be a pragmatist, there are certain things about that that are positive. There are also things that can, <laughs> can hold me back, but that's part of the way that I do things pragmatically. Right. Yeah. There's a lot to that. Very valuable, very practical, and we teach it in a concrete way. And, and if you learn it, you'll be very glad you have it as part yeah. of your, your life Yeah. It's life fascinating. Learning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then that takes us to the next week uh, where we go into key parts of purpose, which is empowering yourself and being confident. And certain things throw you off in life uh, and you want to learn how to overcome those uh, by maximizing your gifts and uh, the things that have been given to you and that you want to pursue in life. Uh, one of the people who took our program many years ago, as I've been mentioning, we've been offering for 25 years. So this is earlier on when we used to teach it in, in either uh, an office or our home office and places. Now it's on Zoom. So they're all recorded, all the, all the classes. So um, she was, had a problem even speaking in a room of eight people. I mean, if you would call on her, she would ask her, you know, what's your thoughts on this? She would just get very nervous and have a problem saying anything. So she took our program and really thrived and developed her own business from it. Even, and this is 20 years later, she's still, I think she's about retiring from it at this point. She's been uh, a successful practitioner in the Sacramento area, actually. And, and online. Anyways, uh, part of it is learning symbolism and imagery. That's very important about healing and coaching. And we teach something that we've de developed called the breakthrough process. One lady, um, we did this with uh, Carol. She uh, wanted to, to clean up her closet. A lot of people are, have problems <laughs> with clutter, as you may know, you may be relate. And after we did the healing process, um, she felt very good and went into some childhood issues and so forth as the process can take you kind of deep. Although it was about clearing out a closet, I talked to, to Carol a couple of weeks after we completed the process and, she, and I asked her, how are it going? How are things with her, your closet and your clutter? And she said, hey, great. I went and I cleaned my closet. Everything's good. And I also got a divorce. <laughs> so you may clean out a lot more things. So you could break through in a lot of different areas. And of course, that was be, it, the divorce was because of an inappropriate relationship, yeah. not that we're promoting divorce. Not that we were trying to, yeah, but just how things kind of take shift and align <laughs> in the, in, for where you, where you want to go. And so the yeah. next class, week six, uh, we go back to those overleafs Jane mentioned. Uh, you want to go into that, Jane? Yeah, and, and uh, without providing any more details, we go into it more. Obviously, this is a system that you don't teach it in, in a day. Um, so we go into the goals, modes, and attitudes, and we also go into a very interesting way to clear imbalances that you discover within them. Yeah. So for instance, a, a pragmatist can become pretty dictatorial, like, well, this is the way to do it. You know? This is the most efficient so, way to do it. <laughs> right. There, is, there can be a negative aspect to it. What you want to do is find how do you shift from there into a positive aspect. So that we, we show how to do that. Um, and it also, it tends to involve balancing the inner and outer. So you could say uh, the more outgoing and inwardly focused parts of the selves, the self. And for, um, for each of us, we may tend to be more introverted or extroverted. Right. And a lot of times uh, there are imbalances because one of them is has taken over <laughs> to a, a too extreme a degree. We need to, even if I'm more introverted, 
even if we're more introverted, we still need to balance it with some extroverted qualities like being able to say hello to people, and, you know, just not be completely turned inside ourselves. Because if you get completely turned inside yourself, it's not a comfortable place to be. You know, we, we need to open up. And the other end of it with an extroverted person, and, and it's interesting when things go wrong, extroverted people who are more that way and uh, have more of the the overleaves, the those qualities that are externally oriented, they may tend to take out their problems on other people, like someone who tries to overpower another person, for instance, or just is is just <laughs> so excited about things they don't actually they just kind of bowl through people who may not be so excited about them because we're all unique. So we we find that balance between the two for all of us, for each of us which also, again, just makes us feel better <laughs> internally. So week seven, which actually continues what you were just saying there, Jane. Right, so the, that inner outer balance is a polarity. And as you may know, at this level of reality, we are polarized generally, like good, bad, black, white, you know, <laughs> good and evil and love and hate, all of those different things. Um, and we actually go into polarities within the body, which are very fascinating in themselves. So um, one of the most noticeable ones for a lot of people is the masculine and feminine. Regardless of what our gender is, we all have masculine and feminine parts. The feminine part of us is the visionary. It has the vision to take us somewhere. And the masculine part has the the will and the active, <laughs> active energy to take us where we're going. So if you, if you don't have a balanced ma masculine and feminine, for instance, if you don't have a vision and you're just going around doing things, mm -hmm. you can, that's why a lot of people, they're going in circles or they're just going a lot of places, but nothing ever seems to change for them. Um, or else if you have the vision, but you don't have the action, <laughs> the active element to go out and, and turn it into reality, you're equally lost. So that masculine and feminine is a really important one. Um, there's also the spiritual earthly, you know, like the people mm -hmm. <laughs> who are rightly sometimes said, they have their heads in the clouds. <laughs> well, we have, to, we have to be able to go into those higher places, but for us, it's really in the end about bringing spirit fully into form here in our lives in this moment. Yeah, the other and extreme so, would be too materialistic, too earthly. But right, right, you can be, yeah, there's more, right now. Be, <laughs> yeah, maybe. right now on, on, on our planet, there are many more people who are earthly, but they don't have the spiritual, so they don't have that, that picture of why, you know, we're, that we're actually here to love one another and to love the planet and yeah. <laughs> all of those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah, but if you just wanna love the planet, but you can't pay your bills, that creates a problem too. Right, right. Yeah. So, so they're all, they're fascinating, the polarities. There are five of them that yeah. we explore in Yeah, there's in the a lot course, there. There's in a the lot program. in all these yeah. things. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And week eight, we go into another thing called centers of gravity. Um, if these are new to you, that would be normal. I mean, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people in our program are very new to all of this, and they say, wow, this is fascinating. There's people who have taken 29 years of holistic healing, coaching, you name it. And this is like, wow, you know, one lady Random. just, yeah. yeah, one lady, Noel just finished our course. She said this was her 13th certification. She's a naturopath and as many other uh, nutritional, she said this is by far the best training she's ever taken. And so what, so because you learn things like week eight, centers of gravity, where four brain beings, everyone, we have an emotional, uh, a physical, a mental, and, and this, and, uh, uh, a moving, moving center, actually moving a moving, elements. and that may be a little unusual to you, but, but anyways, when you learn that these are our functions and neuroscience, brain science is catching up neurobiology and sciences are, are learning more through studies and research, this material came from some more ancient uh, uh, traditions and, and esoteric information, but it's very practical. And uh, it, it relates to modern science, as I said, and 
part of the ex example is you're thinking like formatory thinking. It's a certain kind of memorization, shallow part of quote your thinking, your your thinking brain, one of the four brains. And um, a, it, a lot of society thinks it's very good if you can memorize and know things by facts, and that's good in some degrees. But everything is relevance. Everything is context. It's good if you can remember names and figures and facts and so forth but it doesn't give you understanding or being or what's called more deeper psychological thinking. So just learning that is very important. If you know what formatory thinking in the box thinking versus what it is not, it answers like a lot of what we're sharing here, many of what your experience in society challenges you're seeing around in the world. And maybe- yeah, it's, Well, it is, it's either or thinking. Yeah, And it is like black thinking. and white thinking. Everything. Uh, and the, actually the solution, if you're, if you have a problem, a lot of people, well, they might say, well, like say faced with burning out on your job. And for me, well, either I stay there and I just suffer through the rest of my life and feel miserable or I let it go. And then I, and then I don't have any money and I'm miserable too. You know, it's yeah. kind of like either or, well, what's another possibility? Yeah. You know, maybe you could transition. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's kind of like that. A lot of times we don't, yeah. see that there's more than two options to things. Right. So real thinking, and and it, it's fascinating if you start listening to people. <laughs> I didn't right. really notice it that much until right. I started listening, but people can be very formatory. And we can, you know, you can get stuck in those either or kinds of things. Right. Yeah, very easy to get trapped in that. So that's something well worth learning. And that takes us to week nine, yeah, and and here, you know, as you can see, <laughs> we're taking in this course, we're taking a deep dive into what makes you tick. And it's tremendously important, actually, I think, for being able to live the most fully. And of course, if you want to do coaching and healing, it's it's really great. Um, so the obstacles and opportunities, what we do is we point out some common uh, characteristics that tend to hold people back. And it's interesting also with this, like many of the, the things that we talk about in this course, uh, most people are completely unaware of them. And uh, so in this one, we'll, we do five of them in this particular class. I just want to give a quick example. Uh, one of them is called what we call buffers. How mm -hmm. people, it's kind of like if a person can't quite, <laughs> if something can't quite compute for them or they can't quite see it, then they'll do something that will cause them not to be able to see it. And an, an example is, um, say you, you're out in public and you want to rush through the door somewhere to get there before this other person's there and you rush the door and you almost rush through the door and almost slam it in their face. And rather than having to confront the possibility that you might have been rude, you might <laughs> scratch your head. Yeah. You might like the <laughs> the body will do something to distract itself from being able to see it. You can even see uh, drivers. You have to be careful, of course, <laughs> driving. But you can see drivers on the road. They'll cut people off, and then you'll see them scratching their head. <laughs> right. Because they they know somewhere that that's happened, but they don't want to quite. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. Be able, they don't want to have to face it. Or you know, a person might not be able to hear it. It's like that. Oh, I didn't hear that. You know, somehow I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> or there's an excuse, a justification. Right. Justifications are yeah. so interesting how, and I don't know if any of you have noticed this, but <laughs> and I, when I started looking at it, I found it really uh, interesting. If someone says, well, you know, I saw you take that cookie, uh, that extra cookie, and I thought we were only all going to have one, you know, say it's <laughs> at the office or something. There was only one for you, and I saw you take two. Um, you might then all of a sudden you come up with a justification. Well, actually, it wasn't for me. It was for someone else. You might say it and it, that might not even be true. But it's like the the mind is really good yeah. at making up justifications. <laughs> <Kind of laughs> or important. like a, an important one for coaching is uh, when you're challenging someone. And that's part of actually coaching is is helping people to go further than they would go on their own, right? so that they can accomplish more than they would accomplish on their own. So say 
uh, someone, well, they, they've agreed they're going to go out and talk to 10 people in public because they're shy. So in a week, they're going to go out and just say hello or, you know, how are you or gee, compliment them or something. Um, so you get back with them at the end of the week and they say, well, gee, you know, I just didn't have time for that. That often is a buffer. Like we somehow we just don't have time for those things that scare us. <laughs> <laughs> where we have maybe, you know, if you really looked at it honestly, there would have been time. How long does it take to go out somewhere and say hello to 10 people? You know, probably two minutes. <laughs> so it, it just, that's justifying right. and making excuses. Right. And it is interesting. This is how we grow by expanding ourselves and, and being challenged in a loving way in a way that really where every person is honored for who they are. And that's, that's our focus. So um, along with that, we, we are teaching also, as you notice, different healing techniques. And uh, this one is, uh, it's actually a communication technique, which can be healing too, a uh, spiritual mm -hmm. plane communication, which could be an opportunity to say something you may not have been able to say to a person before they died or uh, say something to someone who you may not be able to speak to because they won't hear you. So it's a, just an inner process, but it's very interesting when people do it. I, I remember mm -hmm. people doing it like with uh, relatives, a woman I remember specifically with her son, um, they were <laughs> not getting along and she did spiritual plane communication. And after that, he was very different. Right. So we think, you know, there are these connections that are happening between people that we don't see on the, on the physical level, but they are there. And, and so spiritual plane communication can be very effective. It, yes, definitely. So that takes us to week 10. So if you're helping people, there are common problems and solutions that, that show up, things like, you know, is the person coachable? Are you coachable? You know, are you open to changing and, and, and doing things differently? Or is the person you're helping, uh, does the person, or, or do you compartmentalize? In other words, part of me really wants to learn life purpose, but my husband isn't interested in any of this stuff. So, you know, I'm just totally divorced the two and, and the two don't come together. You know, it's like, a, so you have to kind of realize that different things are influencing you. And if you shut them off too much, you get kind of disconnected. Anyways, there's more to that, but that gives you like a taste of some of the things. And we mentioned Jane briefly in that uh, overleaf chart uh, earlier. One of the overleafs that we all have is a chief defense, a chief fear pattern, a chief way we deal with uh, uh, difficulties in our life. Uh, and we, we have uh, ways that we either say we're maybe we self-deprecate, we have some kind of self-pitying if there's a stressor or we become arrogant. Uh, or we become stubborn. There's different patterns here. And once you know them, they're very powerful because you tend to go with them, but they're not really useful because there's something basically you probably developed when you were a child or a teenager. And it made sense when you were eight, 10, 12 years old to be very stubborn or to be very self-destructive or to be very impatient, et cetera. But now it doesn't, you know, in the spiritual growth in your life purpose, it becomes an obstacle, it becomes uh, something you can learn and grow from. So that's just a taste of some of the things that are really good to know about and study and have, you know, in your knowledge base, in your mm -hmm. being, because all this is from taking the knowledge, the kind of things we're, we're telling you very briefly here and putting it into your being where you're living it. Right, right. And when we're talking about these kinds of things, these, these times when we, we, really it, it's times when we feel challenged in some way, like we, we need to defend ourselves. Um, we're in fear essentially. And when you're in fear, you can't be your best and you can't be really resourceful. So as I mentioned, when you're connected in that kind of heart and soul kind of connection, right. you actually are connected with what's true for you and what's right for you. When you're in fear, you're shut off from that parts of the self have become disconnected from our wholeness and truth. And so that's one of the reasons why it's so important to be able to see them 
Not right. because it means, it doesn't by any means ever mean that someone is bad or unworthy. It means that there's a misunderstanding here. And once you listen to yourself and are compassionate with yourself or if you're helping someone else, it seems like the soul just emerges and a lot of healing naturally occurs. And, and then you're more uh, living your life from that soulful place, which is part of your life purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. And week 11 out of 12, uh, Jane? <laughs> yeah, so this is back to the obstacles and opportunities. There are a total of 10. We had five in that uh, first round of it and we have five more here. Um, and then along with that, we have another one of our very favorite processes, uh, the reality shift. It's a healing process that is it's intended to shift a person's reality from one that's limited to one that's more expansive. Um, and it all starts, all of these things, these needs for shifts, uh, start with charged emotions. That's one of the things we talk about with the obstacles and opportunities. And when you have charged emotions like, and it's chronic fear, chronic anger, we're not talking about like you see a bear and you're afraid. That's not, <laughs> that's not it. It's actually when they get stuck, when these things get stuck, um, it, it's a red, red flag that something needs to be healed. And again, when we're in fear or anger or frustration or stress, you know, mm -hmm. we'll be actually talking about stress, I think, in a bit here with the process that we're doing. The demo. Um, confusion, uh, any of those. It's an unresourceful state where you're disconnected from your truth, which you need as a guide to be able to really live your life fully. And, and it's interesting. Uh, we've obviously worked with a lot of clients over the years, too. And being uncentered, in other words, disconnected <laughs> from, from your truth in an unresourceful state is one of the most common issues that we find with people. And if, right. if you can just get them to center themselves, then things change very dramatically. The last week of the course, people really love this. We have a how to, how to, how to have a, a ceremony or ritual and part of teaching in this field it does connect with ceremonies and rituals even a class is kind of a, a ritual and how to teach classes because if you're living life you're always teaching you're always learning and probably if you're in this field you're going to be uh, a teacher uh, as part of what you're doing and how to do that um, since i was a school teacher educator as i mentioned for many years and then teaching this for many years where we know uh, how to help people with this and it's a very important skill to have and again, there's practices on all these things. So Tuesday is our practice where we teach this and Thursday you practice uh, the processes. Mm -hmm. um, and this brings up a, another point, which I'm, you'll probably be mentioning it, that along with the, all of <laughs> the, the training, you know, with the, uh, the three areas, we also are helping people with marketing skills. So conducting ceremonies and rituals as part of- right it's part of your professional marketing right. professional skills. So right. we teach those in each class. And I think Philip will probably tell you, we have, we have a whole library of those kinds of things that people can uh, go to, to learn more about that. How to build a business and succeed in that. Right. We help you personally with that as well. Right. Okay. So that takes us, it's time to do a demonstration of holistic EFT on stress and purpose. And, um, we're fortunate to have uh, uh, one of our, actually one of our students, Melissa here, um, to, to do a process and with Jane on it. And Melissa, let's have Melissa come There in. she is, and there's what, Sunny. What do you know? <laughs> people are here. Other people. And, <laughs> and, Friends. Uh, yeah. So we actually, we get, it, it's a very uh, tight-knit group, too. We, we develop, right. I think we just really enjoy each other. So, so, <laughs> so why don't we begin, you know, Jane, why don't you, Melissa, take, see what she wants some help with. We've talked a little bit about her. Sounds wonderful. Hi, Melissa. It's good to Hi, see Jane. you. Hi, Jane. You too. Thank you. Um, so I think Philip talked with you a little bit about um, dealing, I think it was stress with not knowing what direction to go in. Was that correct? Yeah, I'm kind of in the middle of pivoting my business and 
I also have a huge passion project on the side that I kind of am putting off just because it's not making me money right now or not a lot of money anyway, but it's like my biggest passion. So just kind of feeling like I need to give myself more permission to do the things that I actually enjoy instead of Mm, just doing something because I'm good at it or used Mm -hmm. to it or because it's what's expected of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds familiar, I'm sure to many people. Um, Okay, so um, I thought stress is a wonderful place to be looking in general for everybody who's who's here attending and the people who are going to be watching this later that we're going to be doing holistic EFT and for anyone who wants to you could be thinking of some stress that you might have and it's it's good to focus on something very specific like Melissa is focusing on the stress related to you know deciding which things to include in her life um, so you could be just, it's a tapping, we'll be tapping. <laughs> if, if you don't know EFT, we'll, you'll see it. And you can just be tapping along with us and see what you notice. I, usually the tapping also, for me at least, it's very energizing. And even if you're not focused on something, you might want to just tap and feel what, what you notice that from doing that. Because it does, what it does is basically it's like a, like it's a, kind of revving up your whole system because it's going through all the mer- the energy is going through the meridians and kind of helping to clear blockages in there which gives you more energy so just as a note for everybody who's watching and so melissa um would you like to describe that a little more how that stress yeah it's kind of like i wake up and my immediate feeling is overwhelm and just like my to-do list is kind of more things that feel like obligations than enjoyment and it's like I feel like the past month or two has been getting better I've been incorporating more passions um but it's just been hard for me to let go of things that don't feel as good as they used to Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a transformation (laughs) Okay, so um, you feel overwhelmed. Any other emotions? No stress, overwhelm? Um, I think, I don't know if it's exactly an emotion, but like maybe a lack of confidence in, mm-hmm. in showing up as the new version of myself, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uncertainty about yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so with EFT, what we do is we measure from between zero and 10, how strong different things are. Um, And I also like to just ask, because of holistically, it actually is helpful to understand um, where, where, Melissa, do you feel that in your body when you focus on that stress? My heart, my chest, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. feels like a tension. Mm -hmm. And how strong is that tension? I would say a seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's saying seven out of 10. And when you focus on it, how strong is the overwhelm? Overwhelm is like an eight. Mm -hmm. And just the general feeling of stress? Yeah. That's the eight? Yeah, also Mm -hmm. an eight. Okay. And then that uh, lack of confidence, how strong is that then? Self-doubt, I guess. I think that one's more of a nine. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So anything else you'd like to add before we do the tapping? I think that covers it. Okay. And um, so like I said, you want to be specific. We're covering just one area of stress. I mean, she could have stress in different ways too. But actually, when you start covering them, it seems to lessen all around also over time too. But um, our approach to EFT for people who know EFT is a very simple, more like focusing on being present in your body approach rather than saying a lot. 
um, it does start with an affirmation, which we'll do. And then with the tapping, we keep it pretty simple generally. So um, the affirmation is something like, even though I have this uh, stress, would you want to say or overwhelm or yeah. you can say either one. Um, and this is a thing, she's going to say three of them so she can change them up <laughs> around each time, just whatever she feels like saying. So even though I have this and you fill in the blank, I still can love and accept myself, or I completely love and accept myself, something along those lines. So you ready to start? Yeah, let me just take my glasses off. Okay. Yeah, I should take mine off too, <laughs> because we'll be tapping wrong. And so we start by, you're just tapping on the side of the hand like this, and you say, so even though I have this even stress and overwhelm, or this. I completely love and accept myself. I completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this. Even though I have this overwhelm, I completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this. Even though I have this stress, I completely love and accept myself. Okay. And then we start tapping right on the top of the head and you're using two fingers, maybe tapping five or 10 times and you, it, it's enough so you can feel it, but not so much that it ever hurts. <laughs> you don't have to pound on yourself. And then the next one is inside of the eyebrow, five or 10 times there. And I, I do both sides if I can, because it balances both sides of the body. Although they say you can just do one if you want. Side of the eye, it's right on the bone there. And then below the eye, again, right on the bone below the eye. Looks like people know tapping here, mostly. And then below the nose, right there in the middle. The chin. And you can be repeating, you know, stress and thinking you want to stay focused, stress and overwhelm, and repeat those. Stress and overwhelm. Stress and overwhelm. We're talking about now the collarbones, right in the inside, sort of underneath there a little bit. Another nice thing about EFT is if you're off a little, it doesn't seem to matter. The next one, you're, it's like you're hugging yourself, tapping on the side of your body. Stress and overwhelm. And then we do what we call the reset process, which is a different kind of tapping. You're using the whole hand. Some people do it this way and do it that way. You want to be tapping on both sides of the brain. And I like to do what we call the miracle reframe with that. So anything is possible. Anything is possible. Take a nice breath and then tapping right here in the center of your chest where you can feel it's sensitive near the heart. And miracles are happening now. Miracles are happening now. And so part of this with the reset process is you end at the heart, which is where you want to focus to find your truth. So Melissa, from where you are now, um, what do you notice about the way you feel about that stress now, just as an overview? I feel less mentally stressed, like less concerned about what other people might think if I am doing the things that feel good. It's almost like a, a lightness, like a permission that it's okay to do all of those things. So. Mm -hmm. The, sh the physical stress, the tightness in my chest is very low, minimal. Mm -hmm. How strong would you say? Maybe just like a one. Mm -hmm. That's really a great change. And so how, how strong wow. is the, the stress and overwhelm? I would say like a three. Mm-hmm. That's a big change too. They were both an eight before. And then the lack of confidence was a nine. Yeah, that one's like a four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, would you like to do another round? Yeah, that sounds good. So um, if this is new to you, EFT is done in rounds. In other words, if it, if it is changing but not done, then you do another round. In other words, you repeat it because it's like they're, you're going through layers. So we'll do another one and see what happens after that. So you want to just go ahead with the, even though I have this three even times. Though, 
I have this stress. I love and accept myself. Even though I have this overwhelm, I love and accept myself. Even though I have this lack of confidence, I love and accept myself. Wonderful. Okay. So starting at the top of the head, the stress or overwhelm. Stress. Inside of the eyebrow, stress. Stress. Side of the eye. Overwhelm. Below the eye. Overwhelm. Below the nose. Lack of confidence. Chin. Lack of confidence. Collarbone. Stress. Side of the body. Stress. And then the reset, just. Anything is possible. Nice breath, and then another nice breath down here. The miracles, the miracles are happening, happening now. now. Makes me feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> so how how is everything now? I feel like the physical stress is gone completely. Um, the overwhelm and stress mentally is maybe like a one. And lack of confidence is down to a two. Wonderful. Feeling a lot better. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, would you like to do the floor to ceiling eye roll? Yeah, that's good. That's just, <laughs> this is another little thing you can do toward if there's just a little left. There's a little spot here between your little finger and your ring finger. And you can just tap continuously on that. And then st with your head straight ahead, not moving your head, just look down at the floor and then gradually raise your eyes to the ceiling as you focus on whatever is left. And when you get there, you can stop. And take another nice breath. And of course, as, as a process like this is kind of winding down, um, Things are gradually still, I think, changing. So, so how is that now, Melissa? Good. When I got to the ceiling, the word freedom came to mind. So I feel like more emotional, mental freedom. That's great. And that, you know, ultimately, that is so much what mm -hmm. all of us want is freedom, right? You know, when you ask people who want a lot of money why they want a lot of money, it's generally because they want freedom they'll tell you freedom. There's security, you know, it's like, I want to feel more secure. Um, but then that it's kind of freedom is a higher kind of octave of, <laughs> of yep. desires. And so that's beautiful. So how do you feel now about um, making decisions and doing the things that are meaningful and right for you? A lot better. I feel like my passions is like the first place that I'll start versus like worrying about what other people think and holding back that's kind of like the biggest way I hold myself back from doing those things right yeah right. yeah that's beautiful right. and it is you know it is interesting because we're so programmed I know I was just telling someone earlier today I, I can remember when uh, after I was able to leave my job as an architect, I still had this nine to five mentality or nine to five plus, you know, like I had to prove that I was worthy every day by the things I did. <laughs> you know, even like I, if Philip said, well, what did you do today? It was kind of like, oh, well, um, uh, yes, I, I was good. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say that, but it was like, that was what I was thinking. I have to, I have to prove to him that I was good. Like I was worthwhile today. And then we come to ourselves and understand I have to prove that I'm following my path. Yeah. Right. You know, that I'm on the right path for myself. Yeah. And uh, interesting, Philip uh, recently shared an article with me about creative people and, and the, 
the actual the content of the article was primarily about how highly creative people often spend only maybe a half a day quote working like we write a lot and i can't write all day you know we'll write some and then we'll do other things <laughs> you know it, it is when you start looking at your life creatively and this is what we're all opening to also mm -hmm. is the truth that we are creators you know and whatever we're doing it's a creative experience we're creating mm -hmm. our lives mm -hmm. that right. um you can really see things much differently and it doesn't it i, I think p other people may be saying things about what should be and shouldn't be but we have to ultimately please ourselves mm -hmm. following your heart yeah following your passions that was a good example of um how it relates to life purpose that Melissa was clear on getting more freedom. We talked about the four freedoms right. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that's yeah. part of purpose. And when you're purpose, when you're on purpose, you really have a certain sense of freedom, even though you're, you're channeling your energies and your passions to help other people, but you feel free in the process. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So any, any other final comments, Melissa? Yes. Melissa. Yeah. That was perfect. Thank you, Jane. I feel you're like welcome. A nice, refreshing sense of energy going into the evening and the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and when we can really be in that place, you know, of feeling like we're we're connected with what's right for us, we can be so much more resourceful in the way we use our time and the things that we do, and also the way we describe to people who might be inquiring about, well, right. why didn't you do that? You know, <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> It didn't mean right. anything to me anymore, you know. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so very... thank you so much. Thanks, that was Melissa. that was beautiful. Yeah. And just going back to finishing up on, on the the life purpose program part of the uh, certification online via Zoom, Coach Healer coming up October. You also included uh, is a heart of success marketing library. We've recorded many hours of how to build a practice, you know, the ins and outs of that, handouts on that, and how to build a website. So some of that may relate to you and we help you individually too on how to translate it into something, you know, if that is what you want to have help on. Many people, of course, do. So that's built into the program rather elegantly since we've been doing this for many years. Uh, it's not a marketing program in itself, but it has that component in it pretty, pretty nicely, pretty usefully, very practically with a lot of very valuable information. And I guess that takes us to the uh, program, which begins at the beginning of October here in a, just a few weeks from this point in time. And it's something you may want to join us. Uh, there's a short URL there if you're not already on the page, tinyurl.com slash HOL coach, holistic coach. And uh, it describes the life purpose course that we've been talking about in the other two courses, the uh, Manifesting Your Dreams course and the Heart of Success courses and how they interrelate as we mentioned in the transformational triad. So this might be something uh, where you feel like you're coming home and you're following your heart. And those are the kind of people who take the program or it might be like this maybe is what is coming home for me. Maybe this is, you know, and, and, and you probably want to go into it and look more onto that description page there at the URL. And then some people, maybe it's not the right time or maybe not the right program for you. We understand that. So it is for people who want to get connected more with their soul and their passion and their purpose and follow that. That's the big thing to follow it. Most people get to the first part is getting connected. I know all of you who are watching this are connected or you wouldn't even be here. Following it is the big step and getting the support, as I mentioned earlier, is an essential part that often is missing, is overlooked. Like, why isn't it working for me? Because you don't have the ongoing support from people who know how to support you. And in, even in a little group, in a small group where there's hands-on training and you're with other people, you can practice with them, get to know them, get help from them, develop personal and professional relationships. That's very valuable too. Uh, so what would stop you? Well, if it is for you, it would be, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I'm not sure if I could succeed at this. Those are variations of those. So that's, that's going to be it. And we can work with you on the money part. The, the, there's different uh, extended payment, different payment plans. So that can probably be worked out. 
in time, we have to kind of just figure out how that would work out. The program is pretty flexible since all the courses each week are, are recorded so you can review them if you miss any. And there's a lot of materials that you'll have online and hard copy at your fingertips too. Uh, and part of it's just taking that next step. I don't know if I can succeed or it's like the process said, what will people think? I don't know if I can do this. I don't have confidence. That's normal. That's the journey. That's living your life purpose. You know, you either kind of go there one step at a time, not knowing what exactly it's going to be. It's going to show up for you. If you get into the, into the game, show up, play the game. The game is your life purpose, making a difference, helping you in the world. And you take one step at a time, get support. Uh, Jane, you want to add to any of that? Oh, um, sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's, um, it, well, it's, uh, it's interesting for us because we've been teaching this for so many years. We are still evolving. We're still learning and growing. And, and the course still is changing, <laughs> which is interesting. It has evolved quite a bit and it still is evolving. And um, there were many times when I used to think, well, what's wrong with us? We never seem to be able to settle on, on this, like we have it all kind of down. And I realized at a certain point, actually, um, for someone who thinks they know it all and who never changes it, I, I know from our involvement in different associations and things, I've heard from people who were trainers who would say, oh, I'm getting so bored with this, you know, the same thing year after year. Well, for us, it's never the same, and it's always an experience, and just a beautiful one. We're just as grateful, I think, as everybody else to have the opportunity to be with you Yes. for those who are with us, and it's just a, a wonderful thing. A uh, soul-based training is very rare. If you've looked around the internet, you know what I'm talking about, and uh, where people have done it for many years, like we have in this program, that's even rarer. Uh, so it is something that's experiential. The next step would be go to that page, the tinyurl.com slash coach if you're not there already. A schedule a time. There's a place where you can do a planning session where we can talk about you with different payment plans and just if this program is right for you and so forth. Or call us directly at Awakenings Institute. There's a phone number there, 805-934-1238. And there's, there's um, uh, I know a couple people actually here who are taking even the training are actually already enrolled and have taken some of the previous trainings because this is part of a three-part program which you enroll at different times. I don't, Dave, do you want to mention a little bit what it was like for you? He kind of took a little bit of our, our home study trainings and started looking at this and realized that it seemed to be what he wanted to do. Dave, you want to share a little bit how it's been for you? Sure. Uh, I had looked around for probably about a year and um, actually had enrolled in another course uh, here in Ohio, paid money for it, and um, then sort of came up on you guys and <clears throat> enrolled in the EFT course and looked at it and started it and then talked to you and then enrolled in the uh, the uh, Heart of Success course. And it is just wonderful. I cannot say enough good things and no one's paid me to do this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the other people that are here from the course that I've just finished, uh, it's just a wonderful group of people. Uh, we have become good friends and uh, I have just learned so much. It's, it's the highlight of my life. I, uh, I'm a clergy person, retired, and I was looking to do something new and was, just felt led to do something and just kept looking. And spirit just told me, this is where I need to go. And it was sort of like when the, um, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear and you guys appeared. And uh, like I said, I have just thoroughly loved it. I have told more people about you guys. I can't tell you how many, you, you, if, if telling people is anything to bring you new clients, yeah. you should be getting a bunch of them. Because well, we appreciate I have, that. I have just told so many people in this area about, and people who know me, uh, like I had a woman downstairs, we live in a three-story uh, retirement center, and a woman saw me the other day, she says, something's new about you, you walk with more pep, you just seem more alive, 
I said, let me tell you about it. <laughs> and right. so I just That's really great. attribute it. Well, to thanks, this. Dave. Appreciate that. Uh, it's just really a great experience. I can't say enough good things. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Yeah. So people from all walks of life, uh, people like Dave, who was uh, in business and clergy and people. Yeah, I was who, a healthcare administrator. Healthcare originally. administrator, right. People who are uh, lawyers and real estate people, teachers like myself, a lot of educators come in. Um, people who are also who in healing profession, sometimes nurses or alternative practitioners, massage therapists. Yeah, architects. Architects. You never know. Anybody. In, any, anyone can <laughs> do this do stuff. If, they're, if this is what they're being called to do, it's <laughs> listening to your art, opening up. So maybe this is your time to go forward into your deeper into your life purpose, really live it, realize it, help yourself, and then be able to help other people to live their purpose as a coach healer, or maybe something else using this training not, and for, for for uh, quite a bit of spiritual growth and transformation and to be with a wonderful group of small, a small group. Uh, <laughs> small minded <of>, people. <laughs> small, small group of people <laughs> that you can develop personal and professional relationships with is, is great. I mean, it's a rare opportunity to and get all your questions answered on a weekly basis. It makes it convenient to learn too. So it's been great being with everyone. Uh, Philip Mountrose here with Jane Mountrose. Hopefully some of us you will be joining us at the beginning of October for the Life Purpose Training, part of the Online Holistic Healer Coach Certification uh, beginning the start of October. Until next time.